Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Be Great, Be Kind, Steve Kim Experience podcast. I am so excited. I got my man, Jeff Pereira, who I've known for many, many years uh, from teaching, from coaching, just a genuinely amazing person, teacher, husband, and rock star father. Jeff, thank you so much for making time after school, too, to make it on the podcast. So really, really excited. Um, So for the people who don't know Jeff, tell us a little bit about who Jeff or Mr. Pereira is. (laughs) Ah, uh, man. Uh, I guess I'll start when I was younger. I yeah. you know, come from a really great family, great upbringing. Uh, my parents are awesome. Um, I have two brothers who we keep in touch. We may not see each other every day, yeah. but, you know, we're out with, with social media. We're messaging one each other, you know, pretty much uh, daily. Uh, they are both godfathers to my two daughters. Nice. So family was obviously pretty big yeah. um, for me. And... Um, yeah, just grateful for for that upbringing. And now I try to instill those values my parents instilled in me onto my two daughters. So, you know. What's the one thing, like father to father? This is going to be a tough question. Yeah, What's the I, one thing you just absolutely are almost like so dedicated on in, in, in implementing or just wanting the kid, your kids to like grow up to understand? What's that one thing? <laughs> or two or two things. Yeah, like, uh, it, that is a tough question. It's. Being good people, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I I sort of strive to be. I want to be a good person. Yeah. I want people to sort of you know understand and like me because I'm a good person, and yeah. that I you know just want. It sounds cliche, but make the world a better place. Yeah, and so they're really young right now, but if that would I I want them to be respectful and honest and trustworthy and just good people. Yeah. At the end of the day. You remember people that are nice to you. Oh man, that's so crazy and you said like, that. You know, it's, it's crazy that you said that. It's something that I always used to tell my grade eights is like, you know, people aren't going to care that you got a hundred percent on yeah. a grade eight algebra test. Nobody no, cares. No. Mr. Kim doesn't even care. Yeah, like yeah. the the goal is really to be a good person, mm-hmm. like to have a strong moral compass when you leave these doors, Absolutely. right? It's Which so is crazy. True. So all you parents out there who like <laughs> kids are in school, you're hearing from a former teacher and a current teacher. It's about having good kids, yeah. growing, like yeah. having them to be good people, yeah. right? Giving back and things like it's that, so which is true. amazing. It's so, true. so, Jeff, where did you grow up? So, um, <laughs> I guess majority of my years growing up were Malvern, okay, which is like uh, Nielsen Finch yeah. area, yeah. Um, and then, funny enough, two days before my thirteenth birthday, our house caught on fire. Oh, we weren't home, thankfully. And it's another lesson that when your parents tell you you need to come to dinner with them, you go. Yeah. Because that night we kicked and screamed and didn't want to go, and they forced us to go. And if we didn't, I don't know what it'd be, where I'd be right now. No way. So, um, yeah, so December 2nd, many, many years ago, I won't throw my age out there, but uh, <laughs> our house, through some electrical wiring, uh, lit up like a Christmas tree no way and so from there we moved to Markham and so from 13 probably till you know I was a lot older I lived in Markham yeah uh, and now I'm in Richmond Hill we're living with my wife and kids hashtag our hill yeah I yeah, love it yeah, I love it yeah, that's, that's yeah. such a wild story it is, though it is and it's again it's it, all these stories as you know we share with our students yeah because <clears throat> at 13 it's like I'm too cool for my parents. I don't want to hang out with them. But again, I, I, I owe a lot to my parents. And they said, you were invited to this family's house. Yeah. You are coming. And, you know, at 13, I'm like, I don't want to go. I don't want to do this. I want to hang out with you. I want to play video games. <laughs> and they literally forced no us way. to go. Yeah. And I still remember, I we pull into our street and there's, sirens and ambulance and paramedics and everywhere and no one could get a hold of us because they didn't know where we were and we pulled up into our street and from a distance i see my uncle and he rolls up to the car and it's like where were you guys and my dad kind of went through this whole thing and he's like your house is on fire holy yeah that's so i'm like chills. yeah like, that's and ins- i i still i get kind of like choked up because it's like wow if we didn't if my parents and for us, yeah, us yeah. to go, we could have been sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Like, you know, I don't want to think of all the different things that could have happened, but 
it's parents know best most times. Man. <laughs> yeah, most times. Even now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. even now. <laughs> even now, it's like a four-year-old child. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know what? So. Like, thankfully, no one was hurt. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a huge thing. Yeah, so absolutely. That's, that's amazing. Because you can always replace things. Yeah. And as much as, like, it's 100%. your house and there's so many memories, yeah. you guys are still alive. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's that's tremendous. I totally agree. So, so Jeff, how did you how did you land on becoming like a phenomenal teacher, oh, educator, goodness. coach, like everything? You know what? It was um, I was kind of in a in a different place with university. I went into university into business, and I'm like, oh, really? I'm go into business, and I absolutely hated it. I was bored. Obviously, when you're not engaged, as we know, yeah, you don't pay, you, you lose focus. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do well. Um, yeah. I didn't do well in business. So I was like, you know what? I've always been, you know, liked kids. And so I went and volunteered in a classroom, in a grade one classroom. And Mrs. Tucker was her te- was the name. <laughs> That's crazy. And you were still remember. She um, said, yeah. Like, obviously, I went through the, 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 you know, the proper protocol with the office and stuff. But it was that classroom that I volunteered in. And I loved it. And it was just like, wow, this is something I really want to do. So I actually went into ECE first. Okay. And uh, got my diploma in ECE. And then did that for like four or five years. And then kind of said, you know what? I, teaching, this is what I want to do. So then I went and continued work, but got my degree part-time because I still didn't have my university degree. Wow. Got that part-time. And then eventually, long story short, I don't want to bore everybody, but got into Teachers College and, you know, kind of was like, in a way it was my second career, although it's still been, yeah. it's all been through educating the young, the young generation. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was, uh, you know, meant to be, to come into teaching and I was in EA for four years before I got into teaching. It was just, it was, it was honestly the longest route someone could possibly be, <laughs> but I don't regret any of those experiences. I love that you just shared that in that, you know, as an educator, like even as, as a parent, like we obviously want what's, what's best for our kids, our mm-hmm. own kids and the kids that we teach, right? I find sometimes even when I was a teacher, there was such a disconnect between what parents wanted versus what their own child wanted. Mm-hmm. Look, everyone thinks of a glamorous job in terms of doctors and dentists and lawyers yeah. and those highly skilled professionals. And I get it, yeah. great professions, but there's such a disconnect between like what actually exists now yeah. for this generation of students and kids so growing true. up that as parents we, we I didn't know about no like if you said hey you know Jeff you can be a YouTube star yeah. and make a million dollars if I that's know. what you want to do yeah. go crush it really start like learning about the, the the concept of video marketing and things like that but for parents are like you know, I hear it right now from my from my friends like who got kids are like YouTube's just a, it's a waste yeah. I'm like are you crazy yeah. they can look at the passion mm-hmm. In university, you're like, you know what? This is not for me. I'm out. And you did ECE, and then you went to teacher's mm-hmm. college. Yeah, a little bit of a longer journey, but yeah. look at where you are now. Yeah, it's which is which is Which is incredible. How did that start, though, with Miss Tucker? Like, did you just have an epiphany one day? Uh, were you in class? Like while like, in grade one, like while volunteering? No, like, so just you said in you were general. in business, and you're like, you know yeah. what? I, I thought, like, what? what do, you, do you know I, what it was? You know what? It was such a long time ago. I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly what happened, but... Like I said, my mom, and I didn't mention this, but my mom kind of ran, back then you could run home daycare. Yeah, and, yeah. And so I ended up helping out a little bit here and there, and it was it was cool. It yeah, was, yeah. It was kind of neat to sort of, you know, steer young minds in the right direction. And, and I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try this. I'm going to go in. And, okay. you know, I, I made the bold move of just walking into my closest school, um, I said, listen, that's I want to volu- right volunteer. Who, who, you know? Yeah. And that's what it is. I volunteered. Uh, and like they say, the rest is history. She said, you should try ECE. You would be great at it. Right? And I wish, you know what? One thing I, I wish I could reach out to her, and, and maybe this kind of has inspired me to go back to that school and see if she's still, she's still teaching that's there. Because right? it would be kind of cool to say, listen, you kind of... You started this for me, like you got me on this yeah. this path, and fourteen years later, I'm a teacher, and That's you know, long than fourteen, but I've been teaching for fourteen years. It's wild. It's it wild because the passion was there. You're yeah. like, you know what? Like, I went into this because I knew it's something that I, mm-hmm. I at least wanted to try out, yeah. and you went and you volunteered first. Yes. You yeah. didn't even look at making any money oh, whatsoever, yeah. Yeah. and I think that's such. A defining quality of what makes an amazing educator mm-hmm. an amazing, amazing educator. Yeah, thanks. And 
Because your teaching doesn't stop like at like when the bell goes. Oh my goodness, you, no. know you know that. You know, yeah. Right? Yeah. I know yeah. it. You know. Well, well, we can laugh. Yeah, for we, sure. We can laugh yeah. about it because yeah. it's so much more mm. after that yeah. dismissal bell or even before the entry no, bell, right? Yeah. Which oh, is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. So, yeah. man, I don't know. That that's just amazing <laughs> that you were able to kind of be able to do that. Walk over to your local school and just be like, "Hey, I, I, I want to start." What yeah. What are some things that you love about teaching? Um. Again, report cards like, yeah you know all those report cards uh, I think it's the day to day interactions with kids yeah it really is like just on a given day you can have a conversation with them and get to know them and on a different level right yeah put away the academics put aside all that stuff and just you know build those positive relations with students yeah because they remember those things man and I have kids that still come back yeah and visit me um, I have a student coming, you know, in two weeks to do some volunteer because she's going into teaching. Yeah. Oh, and wow. And she wants to, you know, spend some time in my room and yeah. she comes every year. Wow. And it's a student that I had when she was in grade five and That's... now she's third year <laughs> university. Like You're those old. relationships are, uh, yeah, oh man, I'm telling you, it does. It, it kind of it it makes you, right? you think like, oh my goodness, this is, this is nuts. But though it's those moments, yeah. man, you go back to a high school for PD and these kids are all coming yeah, to you yeah. and saying, like, Mr. Burr, like, what's going on? I heard yeah. you. It's the, it's the building relationships to me that it makes me want to just keep teaching. That's super inspirational, yeah, right? It really is. It really is. It's about having impact. I tell this to a lot oh, of people. Yeah. I'm like, you know, people are in it for the money or they're trying to strive to get money. And that's if that's your goal, then great. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, income versus impact. I'll choose impact oh, all day, every single day, and every day of the week. Stephen, we're not in this for the money, man. No. Like teaching, don't get me wrong, great salary, but yeah. we're, we didn't jump into this career yeah. knowing we're going to be living up this life right yeah it's a decent income yeah but at it's the a end de- of the day yeah it's the it's the it's the impact you have on kids yeah it's the relationships you build because they're gonna go off eventually and hopefully say i remember this teacher i remember that yeah. teacher just how i remember mrs tucker yeah which is crazy right? it's so, crazy yeah. and you're right the income's good but it's a good after 11 years yeah a lot of people forget yeah. it's yeah. 11 yeah. years yeah, absolutely and it's a hard that's a hard yeah. path 11 yeah. years to kind of stay dedicated absolutely. bring the fire every mm-hmm. single day mm-hmm. and at that point it, yeah it's it's a, de- it's a decent salary yeah. i'm not gonna lie yeah. but like a lot of people think of it as like well you roll in at 8 30 and then you're out by like 245 and i'm like and summer's off and i'm like do you understand the hours that people put in? They don't. Dedicated teachers yeah. put in? Yeah. Like, sure, that's on paper what it is, but I remember even coaching, like running tournaments. For like, sure. we're done at 3.05. Yeah. I'm at school by 7.30. Mm-hmm. I'm like, but I'm not leaving school till like 7.45 yeah. at night. Yeah. It's not because we get paid. No. We don't get paid, no. but it's because we love it. It's that impact yeah. we have on kids, right? And that would have been my second thing. I love coaching. Yeah, I know. Just finished up our girls' volleyball How'd you guys do? season. We finished third oh, in nice. uh, the areas. Okay. Um, but yeah, you just love it, and yeah, you sign up for these tournaments that go till eight o'clock. Yeah, man. Because you know the kids need that experience, and you do it. Yeah. Right, and and you it's work life balance, but it's still at the same time. You know, my wife is amazing because she allows me to go to these tournaments. I've got two little girls. I was just going to say. And she's the one that said, you need to keep doing this, right? Yeah. So supportive family, supportive, yeah. supportive spouse yeah. means means everything because you can't do that no. if they are not saying, go and enjoy, enjoy what you do, right? She knows I love sports, love coaching. So she doesn't, she makes sure that I continue to take it on. Did you get this from people? Oh, you know what, Jeff? You're going to slow down once you have your own kids. Oh, Did yeah. You, you, oh, yeah. I remember people telling me that. They're like, no, no, no. There's no way you're going to do it. And I'm yeah. like, it's impact. Yeah. It's loving what you do, right? Yeah. But having and it this, takes a lot. It takes a lot it does. of it's organizing. A, it's a sacrifice. Yeah, it's it a is. sacrifice. It is. And I'll tell you that when I was coaching when I was single to when I'm married, oh. it's a lot harder <laughs> because you do have to manage all these pieces. I want to see my girls, of too. Course. Don't get me wrong, right? Yeah. So it's all that stuff. Yeah. But again, like, I, I, you know, it's it's something I love to do, and my wife knows that, and yeah. she wants to make sure that I continue to do those things. So having her support me helps a lot. What's sure. – <clears throat> when you look at coaching and you're a tremendous coach <laughs> – I ask this. I ask this to a lot of people, especially coaches. I'm like, what do you look for? Do you look for skill or do you look for passion? And don't forget, this is a public school. It's a yeah, public program. Yeah. Like, it is essentially open to everyone. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Right. But coach to coach now, like, what uh, do you what do you look to for? To me, I only because of where the schools I've taught at. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of girls 
playing sports outside. Got it. So I needed passion. Sure. I needed you to love this game. Yeah, yeah. And I will teach you those <laughs> skills. And I will. And where we finish, <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, yeah. Love the game. Let's go out and do our best. And from there, we'll figure things out. And I, I remember one school that I opened, uh, pretty much the, none of the girls had ever played before. And we went with the motto, you, we win or we learn. There was oh, no... Like... <laughs> we, we, yes. Yeah. We, we, win gotta, or, yeah. we win or we learn. I There's love that. There's no such That's... thing as losing. Yeah, and yeah. We, we use that as our oh, philosophy and as our motto. And one girl, she just became in love with this game. Like yeah. Just through practices and stuff. And then she, you know, went into high school. She's in, she's in grade 10, I think now. And she still continues, and she may not make the teams, but yeah. she's trying out and yeah. she's doing her best. And it's those again, those relationships you build yeah. that you remember. And then when you see them, they're like, "Man, I, I love volleyball so much. Yeah. Thank you so much." Yeah, it's that. It's it's great. So what co- what sports do you coach? So volleyball is my passion. Passion. Did so you play start, when you were younger? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I played. I was small growing up. I was pretty short, so. Okay. Really, elementary is kind of where I, I, I kind of stop. Okay. High school. <laughs> the gap? Because the gap is huge, one. And then I went I remember to that school too. In, in Victoria Park and Kingston, and we lived in Markham. So it was two hours to get home by bus. Man, yeah. So sports kind of became more of a, a back burn. I did it in murals because it was all during the day, but yeah. actual school sports, I didn't really do much. And then... Um, university. <laughs> it's an, uh, another level altogether. I remember I went out for one tryout and I was, I was lost. Like just these different systems they were running, and I'm like, okay, I don't. Be- I, I I admit I don't belong there. Yeah. So again, did a lot of intramurals. Sure. Um, so volleyball, volleyball for sure. Okay. Um, and then I guess there's really not a lot of sports, right? Yeah, yeah. Basketball's never. I I play, but I've never coached it because sure. just too intense for me. I know you're a big basketball guy. I was Love just, I couldn't, been, yeah. I couldn't, you know, keep up with all the different rules and, yeah. you know, now then the board moved to zone and they yeah. can do this and like, so <laughs> thankfully at every school, I've always had basketball coaches. Okay, good, good. Would good. I step up if there was nobody? Yeah. I absolutely would. I yeah. wouldn't want a, a, a boys or girls not to have a team because there are no coaches. Yeah. I'd go in with the disclaimer, boys or girls, we're going to do the best I can, <laughs> but you know, and so I would still uh, obviously coach if there were no team, but I've uh, but I've been lucky enough to have other colleagues that are coaching. It's, so it's funny you say that in that like you just wouldn't allow for the for there to be no sport Mm-mm. because there was a lack of a coach. Like I remember at my old school, like you know, as looks can be deceiving. I know I don't have a cross country running body, <laughs> but like one year there was no cro- like we had we didn't have anyone. Yeah, we had a phenomenal cross country runner like. Mm-hmm. Always ranked in regionals, one or two or three, yeah. like stuff like that. Like she'd blow me to the water. She yeah. was in grade six, right? And I'm like, look, I don't know anything there is to know about running, but I will go out to the soccer field and I will watch you for an hour for and 15 sure. minutes. Yeah. And we'd have 40, 40 to 60 kids yeah. just running. And I'm yeah. like, you know, I'd run like my couple of laps right. just to yeah. save face yeah. and be like, okay, you know, you guys go do it. And I'm like, <laughs> having like a coronary. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm like, oh, yeah. whoa. Yeah. <laughs> But it's that's it's just providing that that outlet for mm-hmm. students. Mm-hmm. And the way that I looked at coaching was that you're gonna you're gonna reach the high flyers in the class. You'll also reach the ones kind of I'm not gonna say outliers, but the ones who just that's not their thing. Yeah. Academia is not their thing. But giving them the opportunity to to, to fly high yeah. outside of the classroom, I thought was just tremendous. Yeah. So just you talked about those relationships. Yeah. I sometimes I can say it now. I'm not teaching. I found those relationships to be more rewarding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. more rewarding yeah, because there's just something so integral missing in their lives maybe it's day to day or week to week or whatever it is even at home that you're providing that yeah. that venue for them yeah. that outlet which is tremendous we're actually I don't know if this is a plug for our board and if you have to cut it just do it but we call it the, the underserved and underperforming students that we want to sort of reach out to okay. and it's sort of exactly what you're talking about right? yeah yeah. you know the ones that may fly under the radar that kind of need that yeah. that conversation that yeah. show you care because yeah. they may struggle academically so this is why we do it all the clubs all yeah. the sports are for those students that don't have that outlet yeah and they need something that's that's exactly what we do right? so i don't know if i'm supposed to share it. i don't know if i'm supposed to share but you, you finished your pqp too <laughs> yes i have <laughs> so talk to us a little bit that like that journey like yeah. 
right? A men's a big role, it very is. different role it though, is. right? Yeah, yeah. So what was kind of, what was the the motivating factors um, to do that? Was it a change? You just wanted something different in education? There's, there's obviously more than one factor that kind of pushed me in that direction. Um, change would be one. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> impact at a bigger level. Yeah. Right. When you think about what admin has to do, sure. You know, it's you got to impact not only just your students, but it's your staff, it's your community. So it's 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 at a much bigger level. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've had some great administrators that have sort of pushed me and given me that leadership and yeah. that sort of that moral support, saying this is something you can do. Yeah, yeah. You know, and sometimes that's all you need. You need that little nudge from someone that you know you aspire to be, yeah. and the rest you can kind of handle. Yeah. So it was probably some of the best PD I've ever done. Wow. And it's just a matter of now that timing. I don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, having two girls and stuff, I want to obviously be around for that yeah. piece. And there's <laughs> long hours in admin. Yeah. Uh, long and lonely yeah. hours, right? Yeah. But impact, I think impacting, you know, change is yeah. probably one of the biggest reasons. And again, still building those positive relationships. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So, yeah. Jeff, I heard about, or actually you reached out to mm. me about this phenomenal, phenomenal <laughs> initiative that you've started yeah. at your school. Um, it's essentially a kindness club yes. dubbed Carnegie Cares. Yes. I get goosebumps thinking about it <laughs> because it, people look at kindness as, as a weakness mm -hmm. in society, mm -hmm. but it's such a tremendous strength. Yeah. It really, really is. Talk to us a little bit about this crazy initiative uh, that you've started yeah. at your school. So. It was really your shirt. <laughs> the shirt, funny enough, is the one you're wearing. Because I watch all your social media you know, pieces. And I was like, man, I love that shirt. And I reached out to you and asked, yeah. where could I get it from? Yeah. And that's kind of how our conversation oh, okay. started going. And sure. then that's when I talked about it. Um, it's funny. A couple of years ago, and this is why I say kindness has always been important to me. A couple of years ago, I made it a sort of um, my, my goal that... I was gonna post something on Facebook every week, a different random act of kindness. Love it. To whoever follows me. Okay. Do it if you want, don't do it, it doesn't matter to me. So every week on Sunday night, I posted it to Facebook. Instagram wasn't big back then, so I didn't have Instagram, so it was just Facebook. And it caught, it caught wind and people started loving it and yeah. giving me great responses. I made sure that everything I posted, I followed through, walk the walk, talk the talk to everything. Um, but then to do it every week, it, it got hard. a lot. Yeah, so yeah. it kind of fell by the wayside, and I kind of sort of felt bad about that because I still wanted to keep pushing kindness on people. And just re people just need reminders. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we have busy lives. People have places to get to, and it's not that people don't want to be kind. It's just they just need those gentle reminders. Yeah. Hey, today, you know, hold the door open for someone. Yeah. How hard can that be? You know, next week. You know, let someone in line in front of you, yeah. or let someone you know merge into your lane, or With whatever, going crazy, whatever right? the case may be. Um, and so it just kind of fell by the wayside. And then, funny enough, a former colleague of mine, she was the one that kind of was like, "Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Let's do something." And so September 11th is National Services Day. Okay, yeah. And so we kind of started talking, and some other colleagues, and we kind of said, "Let's do something." And so that day, we, uh, at least I sort of reached out to my intermediate uh, colleagues and I said, volunteer someone in your group that you think has leadership and that wants to be taking on this role. Yeah. Because we're going to go out and we're going to deliver baked goods, coffee. I know. love this, man. And so we, <clears throat> September 11th, got permission from my admin and, you know, we took students over to the fire hall, the paramedics, and the police station. No way. And I reached out to them because you don't want to just show up, you know, unannounced because yeah. they've got lots of things going on. And they were so unbelievably grateful when I re when I went first. And so this, I said, this is what we want to do. And they were all, like, shocked. Like, why? Why are you guys? And that was another alarming piece to me. It's like, why should you be shocked? Like, look at what you do for us. Yeah. You know, you're running into danger while we're running away from you. Yeah, yeah. I always share that with kids. Think about that, right? Yeah. On a burning building, we're running in, <clears> and these <throat> firefighters are running into a building. And so it came September 11th, you know, we, we got our group together, and we drove over, and we spent time at each of these places. Yeah. And they were just, they were really 
eternally grateful. And again, kids need to see that, right? They need to hear You're the amazing, ones. man. No, You're, trust me. Like, like, no, this they, is, you get it. Yeah. They, this is what it's about. They need to see that. I could have done it myself. I could have gone to these places. But that's you. Delivered though. the donuts, yeah. delivered the coffee, and be done with it. Said I'd done my thing. But students need to see this. Yeah. Our, gen- our youth <clears throat> needs to see the impact they can have yeah. with these small gestures. Yeah. And it was. It was a small gesture. You know, we gave them coffee and donuts and thank you for your services. It takes nothing to yeah. do that. Right? And so from there, once, once I saw that buy-in, I said, okay, I, I got to start something. Yeah. And so we came, I came up with the Carnegie Cares Club. Okay. And... You know, you never know. As as when you start up a club, yeah. you're you're nervous. Please show up. Please show, show up. up. <laughs> like, what's gonna happen? I mean, like, this is dumb. Like, why am I gonna? Why would I join this club? And it was unbelievably overwhelming. I expected eight to ten kids. Yeah. Honestly, I wasn't expecting a lot. We've got uh, seven. Inter- so I just kind of left it at seven and eight. We have seven classrooms. It's a pretty big school. So I said, you know, one to two from each class, you're going to get me in that 10 to 12 range. And they came out in numbers. We oh, started okay. off with 18. Okay. And it was great. I was like, holy, this is amazing. Yeah. But then you think, okay, they're going to drop off. Yeah, yeah. And instead of dropping off, we started getting more students coming <laughs> in. And so, you know, we're at, we're standing steady at 24, which is, a, you know, a fantastic yeah. number. And we just... Think I think of initiatives and we, you know I'm always looking things up. They, I want their voice. Their yeah. voice is really important. Yeah, so yeah. during our meetings, they'll look up different initiatives. Um, we did Kindness Week just uh, November. I can't can't uh, November twelfth. I think is Kindness World Kindness Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did a whole week of kindness initiatives in wow. our school. Wow. Um, I did Socktober, which was <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Like yeah. oh my goodness, Herbert Carnegie Socktober. Public School, man. I'm, Unbelievable, like 1,100 brand new pairs of socks we were able here. to give to 360 kids. Get out. I yeah. saw that post, yeah. which is amazing. And it just, so that was our, that was our kickoff to this club. Yeah. And from there I said, okay, we've got potential here. We've got, we've got a great group. Yeah. We've got a great community and there's no reason why we can't keep this thing running. So I see you guys so, up, at, uh, up on stage at Quest. No, that wasn't us. No, no, but I, oh, I, eventually, I, I see it. I see hey, this like going you know, right yeah. through the board. The thing is, I don't. I'm very humble. It's not. I don't promote, and I, I know people do that a lot, yeah. and maybe I should. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like on behalf of my kids, I should be promoting this, yeah. right? Because yeah. it is. It's it's something really, you know. And like I said, there's a group of us that we're trying to instill kindness in all our different schools. You know, and I don't want to take sole credit for this. There's a lot of other people in their own respective schools that are are also doing great things. Yeah. Um, and it's just like I said, getting that message out to the youth that, man, you can change someone's day. Oh, and it takes nothing. 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 It doesn't cost anything to be kind. Zero. I say this Zero. all the time. Yeah. And one of the it's it's interesting. I do, I do a lot of reading since like now that I'm not teaching. I have all this time <laughs> to like read. One of the fastest ways to become happy is to do something kind or nice for someone else. It's actually like clinically like mm-hmm. proven. Like yeah. if you the more kind things you do for other people, yeah. you just become happier. Yeah. And I think that's maybe one of the, the the missing components in in school, I would say, is that we don't necessarily give the kids an opportunity in the classroom right. to like exercise their abilities yeah. to like be like, you know what, I want to go here and I want to do something nice for these people. Like right. whatever it may be. It's people like you on your own free time that create this opportunity for, for students. Yeah. So not only are you providing a great outlet for students, but like you're also like helping to like strengthen their, their mental health, mm-hmm. which is a huge thing in our big, board, it's right? It's really big, yeah. So yeah. talk to us. What are some of the initiatives coming down the pipeline? So uh, we just finished, so we did this Kindness Cafe for staff. Oh, nice. Because I think so staff, what, Okay, so what's, what's this? What's this Kindness Cafe? So uh, we just decided that um, during Kindness Week, mm. Um, sometimes staff get overlooked. As teachers, you know that, right? But sometimes we get forgotten about. And yeah, as yeah. someone who understands that, I want to make sure the staff that I work with realize we're not forgetting about you. So we did a kindness cafe at our morning recess and lunch recess where we provided baked goods. Um, no and they came and sat down and 
you know, just chat with one another that you may not see. We're at a big school. Kids yeah. may not see grade eight and vice versa. And so it was great. It was, you know, one teacher said, I've never been up to the second floor. <laughs> like, I know that sounds, it's small. It's but funny it's though, so, yeah, yeah. You know, and there was a lot of appreciation that, from there. And I had students part of, as, as part of our club be kind of like the hostess. So they would come around and serve these baked goods. You know, teachers kind of just got to sit and just, yeah. you know, not worry about, you know, other things that are going on and yeah. just have a time to sit with a colleague you may not sit with, chat with a colleague you may not chat with. Um, so that was recent. We're right now in the middle of, uh, we teamed up with uh, YRP. Yeah, I saw that email that you sent. Um, so YRP has uh, an initiative called Holiday Heroes. Yeah. And our board is 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 kind of um, on board with it. And yeah. it was on our on our portal. So it's, you know, something that I saw, I said, this is awesome. Yeah. Like, let's do this. Um, and so that we're doing that. And so we're asking students to bring in um, brand new pajamas, mitts and hats for, for kids. And we're also uh, helping out the Von Food Bank wow. with monetary donations. I think the bank, the Von Food Bank is now asking more for monetary because some of the food they bring in is not necessarily all everything they need. Yeah, yeah. So we're doing that as well. So um, we teamed up with student leadership. So that's another great oh, wow. thing. We're, we're combining two clubs yeah. to work together to, you know, have these two initiatives, you know, take off and be successful. So oh, that's uh, they're handling the Vaughn Food Bank, we're handling the uh, Holiday Heroes Drive, and yeah. we're just, you know, just at this time of year, it's all about giving, right? Yeah, like, yeah. And thinking about children and not having mitts and hats and yeah. pajamas, like we all love, like every school I think has pajama day. Like yeah, it's yeah. just something you do at least once a year. Yeah, yeah. And that's because kids love pajamas. I also love being in pajamas. Yeah. So knowing that you can provide <laughs> a, a child with brand new pajamas because they don't have them yeah how do you not buy into that and yeah. that's kind of and and sort of to tie on to that the talk about about building relationships the contact i made at yrp i reached out to him because they came, they were willing to come pick up all the deliveries yeah and i reached out to them listen the impact is students coming to your district I yeah, mean, yeah do you mind yeah. if we drop the stuff off yeah. and he was all over it man he loved the idea he's like of course we, you know we, yeah and so that's it's just again so we're gonna i'm gonna take a group with whatever we collect and we're gonna drop it off with uh, drop it off at their district as <laughs> as to again show the yeah. show students the impact they're having that's yeah that's crazy where do you see this club going Let's say in the next, you know what's crazy? Because it's only been like three months, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah, Like fully. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and months, yeah. you're doing such tremendous things. Mm-hmm. Like, is there like a, a like an end goal? Not even an end goal, but like, where do you see this going? That's, you know years? what? That's the thing, unfortunately, with with um, with grade eights. Like, they're going to move on, right? So now, so yeah, I'll start with the grade, like, you know, the yeah. grade sevens will have to be our leaders next year. But that's, it's, that's the one point piece is they can't, this is, I started it in a year where they're in their last year and they can't continue. But maybe they say they go because high schools are always open to clubs. Yes, you know, and a lot of the open houses we've gone to and the and yeah. the orientations we've done already with our transitions, they say if you have a club, we're willing to you know be open to hearing about it. So yeah. maybe these guys go over there and say, let's if they don't have one, let's start up a kindness club. So that for me would be. <laughs> Amazing, right? And I'll continue it at, at Carnegie. Yeah. But these group, this group that moves on to their respective high schools, maybe one of them says, "What? There's no kindness club here. Let's start one up." That it, to me would be fantastic. It happens. I'm telling oh, you, I'm, like speaking from experience, mm-hmm. we always did a huge and like not end of the year, but we will always do a huge paying it forward project. Okay. Every year with the grade eights, and so one year I remember Daniel Haber, Rebecca Wynn. They did these kindness cards, these random acts. Mm-hmm. If you got caught doing something kind, yeah. they would give you this kindness card, mm-hmm. right? With a kind of cool quote, quote right. in the back. <clears throat> but I remember as like the grade eights go, I have I thought the same thing. And I'm like, we worked so hard this year as a grade eight teacher. Yeah. I'm like, and now what? The best feeling is when these kids come back or they're like, hey, Mr. Kim, we've started this initiative at, you know, Vaughn or wherever right, it is, like right. based on this whole paying it forward concept. Yeah. And I'm like, so tell, I'm telling you, it'll happen. Yeah, it'll sure. 100% happen. Where do you want this to go board level? Let's get macro. Oh no, but you know what? Because we're going to look back on, you're going to look back on this and be like, I can't believe it just, it started that. Mm-hmm. Like, 
What would you so want the board? Pretty humble, yeah. right? Like if it goes bigger than it already is, I, I would be shocked. Yeah. I guess, because I'm just running Why? a small. But I don't Why know. Shocked, just, though? Not maybe shock's the wrong word, but obviously I'd be extremely happy that it has. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just I'm good. Just you know, working with my group. And let's, don't get me wrong. If it goes. <laughs> board level and uh, that would be awesome like, yeah it would be, it would be so great and what i love and this is totally off tangent but i just because i remember the story and is that the team that i've sort of formed they're seeing kindness acts happen in in different ways i give you two stories yeah 100 percent. so clayton latouche oh yeah yeah okay who is yeah yeah our assist, assistant director he was at our school, and we were doing this. Uh, Bernice Carnegie was doing her her book launch for Herbert Carnegie's 100th birthday. Wow. And so one of the students on my uh, committee in, in Carnegie's care was helping out, volunteering his time, and just in random said, I wish I had money to buy the book. This man, Clayton Latouche, goes and purchases this book and hands it to him. No way. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, this is the epitome of kindness like yeah. this is you can't get anything better than that and yeah. to have it to happen to somebody who's part of yeah is it was crazy wow. and so i spoke to the student after i said you're going to share the story at our next meeting and he did yeah you know and 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 so i'm hoping that eventually once we're, we'll end up doing another like i, I want to start sending an invitation to clayton yeah from this student yeah and say come we want to sort of pay it forward or, or re you know kind of pay our kindness back to you yeah so just things like that small little things like that so listen you know what if it if it goes bigger great yeah if it doesn't i'm okay with that too because this was meant to be just something to boost the morale in our school boost the morale amongst our staff yeah it wasn't i wasn't <clears throat> thinking you know board level or if it gets bigger than that it's just small like i keep saying this small impacts like yeah. You know, sorry, something small can make a big impact, right? Yeah. And that's all that matters. And it's like, so if I if it's just that Carnegie, yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't need it to, you know, go into these huge things. But if it if someone catches wind of it and they want to do something, yeah. I'm willing to, you know, kind of share with it's, them. It's and, that whole adage of like a drop in a pond. Yeah, like it'll ripple. It right? will. It's, ripple. it's a small drop, yeah. but just watch it mm -hmm. kind of spread out. Yeah. I know this is gonna catch. This is gonna catch wind. I know it because it's something that it, it, there is such a void because it happens like individual teachers. We can teach the concept of kindness and being good moral agents like within the classroom. Right. But to be on a little bit more of a macro scale, whether it's school wide, yeah. a few schools in the neighborhood, or even yeah. board wide, yeah. I think it's something that absolutely is missing. Yeah. So let me ask you: for people who think that the the concept of kindness is a weakness, what do you have to say about that? Right, because we hear it like kindness is a weakness. Like, don't be too kind. Like, give it a try. I guess. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know how someone could think it's weak. Yeah. Would, and so, uh, well, they think that you're pushover if you're kind, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, it's hard for me to explain how it's not. It's yeah. powerful. It's yeah. it's meaningful. You feel so good about yourself. You you're making someone else's day. Yeah. You know, it's just it's. It's crazy that you have no idea the impact you can have on someone because you have no idea what their what their story is or what oh, happened in that. the morning yeah. or what happened in period one that now in period three you've opened the door for someone or you said hi to them or, you know, just anything. Yeah. You, just, you just don't know people's backstories. Yeah. And so when you're kind to someone, you just you you just don't know what how that can change their behavior, their demeanor, yeah. what they were thinking, you know, mental health. Yeah, we're talking huge. a lot about mental health in schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it just, it, when you are loved or feel that you're loved, it changes things. I love that. Right? Like, it yes. just, it's When you feel yeah. included. Included, belonged. Like, like, yeah. It's just, it's totally different, right? It's totally different. Why do you think this, like, this idea of kindness why do you think you know it gets instilled in like kindergarten like the golden mm. golden rule right yeah, treat others the way you, yeah, and then yeah. what happens like people get busy right and, like, really, and like i said earlier people just need reminders i don't think people don't want to be kind yeah 
I believe that a hundred percent. We get so caught up in work, family, social media, yeah. that we forget about things that are like, like you said, everything we learn, we learn in kindergarten. Right? Yeah. Hold the door open for someone. <laughs> Please, Close thank you. Hand, be polite. <laughs> like we forget it. Those are the little things that just mean so much. Yeah. I'm not saying you need to go out and donate thousands of dollars to charities. Yeah. That's great if you can do that yeah but that's not really the point yeah right the next time you're walking through a door hold the door open for someone you know like buy someone a coffee it's yeah. two bucks yeah right like you know just kind of just do those things little things right because it doesn't it cost nothing you've inspired me to, to buy me. coffee tomorrow for the person <laughs> like it. behind me do it i do it every once in yeah, a while that's awesome just drive away and the other thing is you can't look for the recognition no you it's can't it's not about knowing or it's not about you know wanting to be thanked for it yeah right so you have to be kind because you want to be kind yeah. you're not looking for incentives and i've, I've tried to tell mm. the carnegie cares club students this is not about you know <clears throat> getting something, getting in, something return. in return yeah you know at the beginning of october they're like maybe we can give prizes to the, the classes mm. that bring in the most i'm like you know what great idea but let's wait. Let's yeah. see if we can not give people incentive. Let's see if they want to do it because they want to do it. Wow. And we didn't have to. Wow. We brought in 1,100 <laughs> new pairs of socks. And I said, with wow. With no incentive. And like, I that's say, the point of being kind. I say, not, wow, because it's like not, so often it's like, hey, the class that bring in, brings in the most canned goods is going to get a pizza, pizza party. party. Right? <laughs> the pizza party is the go to. Yeah, right? right? And you know what? If, listen. At the end of the day, if that's what you have to do, yeah. great. But I really want to side on not doing that at first. Let's yeah. see, you know, if if students and families and staff just want to do it because they know they're helping out families. And this is this is Vaughn. This yeah. is not, you know, Richmond Hill. This is York Region. Yeah. It's not like going to Africa. It's not going to any other countries. Yeah. It's yeah. right here in your own communities. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There are families that are struggling. Yes. And hidden poverty. Hidden poverty. Yes. Yeah. That's a great term. Yeah. And why would we want to help them? Yeah. Why? I'm, I just don't understand. I'm going to share this story with you because you're, you, you, this is everything that you're doing right now. Is I remember going to the Vaughn Food Bank with my grade eights, and every year we do a food drive, and we allocate the donations to a food bank, a local local food bank. And I remember one of the grade eight boys, he wouldn't get off the bus. I was like, What's going on, man? I'm like, come on, let's go. We, we we have like eight massive bins of food. I'm like, we need your help. He's like, I can't. I'm like, what's going on, man? He just, he said he broke down, broke down. And I was like, what's going on? He's like, my dad used to bring me here when I was in grade three. And I was like, he's like, it's just crazy how like I'm back here again, mm -hmm. not wanting to, to get food, but being able to give. Yeah. And like breaking down 13 year old boy, like big boy too, mm. like bigger than me, like, like breaking. And pe people look to him as the leader, like right. whether it's in the classroom or on the courts, like that was crazy impact. Like yeah. he, it, it hit him, it hit me, it hit me to see that come full circle. And yeah. just it's those things, right? It's, it's, it's that impact and understanding that you know what? Like, yeah, we live in a very affluent neighborhood mm -hmm. or community. We do. And I, we're, I'm very thankful for that. There's so much hidden poverty that yeah. exists, uh, just like right underneath our nose, right? Yeah. So thank you for supporting oh, and bringing that to light yeah. and instilling. Just you're raising great human beings. I hope so. You know, and that's kind of where we go with teaching, right? It's that's a great way. Of, we want to raise great human beings. Yeah. Right? The academics will come. You, you know, but right, like <laughs> we want to raise great human beings. That's really what it comes down to. It really we does. People to be nice to each other. Okay, this is a That's great segue. I ask all my guests this <laughs> because it is. You're, you're absolutely right, and it's raising great human beings. But, Mr. Pereira, what does be great, be kind mean to you? I ask this to all First my guests. First of all, love it. Okay. I love it. I, you know, <laughs> I'm, I, I still need to think of my own hashtag for this, <laughs> for this club. So I'm willing to take ideas if you've got any. Um, but I think it just be the greatest person you can be. Yeah. And I think when you are the greatest person you can be, kindness falls into that, yeah. right? And it relates so much to just who you are, what, how you operate in society. Just be the greatest person you can be, and kindness will, you're gonna be kind doing that. I like love it's it. Just, 
I don't know. It's it's a great it's a it's a really a great statement. I, I really love, love it. it. I, really I do want to also share with you before we kind of get into the last two lighthearted questions mm-hmm. is shirts. We'll talk a little bit about the shirts right. because this was actually made uh, for me okay. uh, from someone from my office. And I reached out to her and I said, I need the lady that does it. So I spoke to her and she's like, how many do you need? Mm-hmm. Everything. So she's so on board too. And I'm like, it's like something's growing, mm-hmm. right? Like with her too. And I don't know. I think like she's going to do something as well on the mm-hmm. side. I don't mm-hmm. know what it is, but I'm really, really excited to see that kind of grow. Um, two lighthearted questions, okay. Mr. Let's Ferrero. What is your all-time favorite food dish? <laughs> Oh, married <laughs> to an Italian? Oh my goodness, I eat well. Yeah? I really do. So it could be childhood, like growing up yeah. at home, like now. I'm going to go with pizza. Yeah? Pizza. From is where? My... Homemade or like? So here's the thing. Okay, so uh-oh. before I met my wife, yeah. it would be, you know, like Pizza Nova. I'm not okay. going to lie, I love the pizza, but she makes a killer no homemade way. pizza. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. And now... It's our dish that we bring to my friends. Now that she's just known oh, really? to make homemade pizza, and it's, it's so that would be okay. It's, it's pizza. Yeah. It's comfort so, food. Like it's just yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be warm. You can eat at room temperature. You can eat cold. It's great after a night out. You know, like it's just good at any time of the year, right? What and, do you mean? And, we won't get it at a yeah, night out. No, You're a teacher. Uh, but that being said, yeah, just that she now like yeah. I'm, I'm spoiled. She's she's a good cook. Oh, that's amazing, amazing. Okay, and last question is, what's your fondest childhood memory? Oh, man. <laughs> fondest childhood memory. I think family vacations. Oh, yeah? What, is there one in particular that kind of stood um, out for you? So we were um, surprised. Uh, my parents surprised my two brothers and myself uh, uh, to a trip to Disney, okay. to Florida. And they told us we were going to St. Petersburg. And when you're uh, like eight, you don't know St. Petersburg is in Florida. You're like, oh. And so we're like, okay, we're going to St. Petersburg. Yeah. And got on the plane and we're all sitting down. And of course, they came on the, and they're like, St. Petersburg, Florida. And then they kind of reached over and said, we're going to Disney. And I'm like, oh my and you know when you're eight going to disney so, yeah yeah it's quite something so, hey when you're 40 going to yeah, disney it's enough. still the same thing fair enough but we my parents made sure that we took vacation really that's, that's nice. where you, you you kind of think about those things yeah. and how grateful you are and some families don't get that yeah. right and it's not i can't i can't buy them vacations yeah but i can try to do my best to make sure they have at least their basic needs right because at the end of the day that's important. Hey, man, as long as they're loved. That's yeah. the number one thing. As yeah. long as they're loved, Absolutely. everything else is secondary. Exactly. Uh, exactly. You are the epitome of oh, rock star, thank father, thank husband, thank teacher, thank mentor, inspirational like guru. Thanks I'm just, I'm so this. happy for yeah. the time thank for you being able to share. If there's anything that I'm we can do. I'm glad we still were able to stay connected. Yeah, 100%. I was, hey, was, social sad. Pa- I was sad you left, man. We, we <laughs> lost the good one. It's the power but, of social um, media, yeah, right? Yeah, like, it's it not really all the glitz really and glam. Really it's about telling yeah. a story, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, you know, let's, you guys follow us on our journey. Yeah, let's absolutely. see if we can kind of like absolutely. knock this one out of the park, sure. which I know we will. Sounds good. Thank you so, so thank much you. for your time, Mr. Thanks Pereira. Fantastic. Thank As always, you guys know the drill be great, be kind, have a phenomenal, phenomenal holiday season and a wonderful and blessed new year be great be kind everyone take care see you later